Hey there, Ron Sullivan, your online hitting consultant, and we're going to explain things today so a five-year-old can understand it. You ever get tired of going to hitting videos and guys are trying to make this into rocket science? You leave the video and you kind of go, yeah, those all sound like great ideas, but man, I've got to work with a seven-year-old later, right? So we're going to talk about things so that you, the coach, can understand it and you, the coach, can communicate these things very easy to your player. So we're going to talk again and we're going to build on the last idea we were talking about with launch position. And launch position a lot of times is misdiagnosed by many of our so-called experts. You'll hear it in their analysis constantly. Here's a great launch position and your player is failing to get to a good launch position. All right, this is the first problem I see. And by the way, I'm speaking from experience that, you know, some years back, you know, we've been doing video analysis for a long time. And some years back, that would have been something I would have thrown out. I would have said, oh, yeah, here's a bunch of pictures of pros and your player doesn't get to that position. If you get to that position, you're going to be a great hitter. That's what I used to think the problem with players that had drag problems or what I think a lot of people would talk about as sequence problem these days is I thought, well, if that's the way that's the way I'm going to fix players because they just have things a little bit out of whack. Right. And this is not the problem at all. In fact, I'm going to talk today about how training your player out of the gate to get to a good launch position as the first measure is actually putting your player at a biomechanical disadvantage. Right. So if you think that this player that does this is just a few drills away from doing this, you're wrong, right? So why do players do what they do? Well, we've talked about this extensively. Um, about You can look at my bat drag video lately where we talk about why kids do these patterns. These are beginner patterns. And what I've recognized over the last few years, I've stopped calling this, well, it's obviously a drag issue, right? But we have to have names for arm bar, drag. But what, really what it is, these are beginner patterns that every kid starting the game off does. Okay, and so first we have to do the hard work, right? As adults, we have to say, okay, well, what's really happening that's causing my player to do that? Instead of, I need a drill to make my player's elbow look different. That's not the first step. The first step is understanding why. Why do players do this? Now, I'm going to give you a great example. I've had this red bag now for about nine years. And the kid came into the shop and I just said, you know, I've never worked with him before. And I said, hey, you got your bat there. I want you to just swing the bat, hit the bag, and then stop at contact. Here's exactly what you'll see. Eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Ready? So they're here and they go. You have them freeze there. Notice the bat. This is a pretty big red bag. The bat on the other side of the bag. Right? And I want you to see the difference from this position to, well, let's go over here to where we're supposed to be and look at the difference in the shapes of my arms. Completely different. Now, this is the difference between a player that understands what it means to get inside and a player that doesn't, right? And so everything that players do that have drag mechanisms, all this is geared or is directly connected to not understanding the rules of hitting. This is why I call my program Fundamental Perfection Program Online, uh, because this is the step that you have to take with kids. But what we do is we teach mechanical awareness these days. Well, your player's elbow is this in this shape. And here's why it's a disadvantage to teach a player that thinks hitting is out in a round space and then immediately say, oh, you're a sequence problem. Let's teach you a good launch position. The reason why this is a, a disadvantage is because I still have the idea that hitting is out and around. So these are the kids that will do some pretty good stuff on the tee, right? Because dad said, hey, you got to get to a good launch position. And you throw them a ball and then everything goes back to this. Because you didn't fix how they attack balls, you fix what they look like. <laughs> and so this is the first step. And when your player, like I don't teach launch position anymore. Okay, now there are certain things that players can do when they're going into their launch, especially older players, that will put them at certain disadvantages in terms of positioning, right? So if a player's landing in their weight shift with everything neutral, we're going to talk about how to keep everything back. We can also see if a player is maintaining some presence in their backside as they're going to their front side, right? We can do those things. But with kids, what I've learned is, is if you focus on the important pro problem is that they think hitting is behind, under, and around, and you say, no, no, no. And remember that, last, that one video I made recently where the 12 o'clock side of the ball is the pitcher side of the ball. The 6 o'clock side of the ball is the catcher side of the ball. The 5 o'clock is over here closest to you. And the seven o'clock is closest to me. Well, remember, kids think hitting is they're basically moving the barrel around to the five o'clock side of the ball. This is why kids hit ground balls. Next video you see where somebody says ground balls come from kids uh, hitting down too much. That's not true. Kids don't do that when they're learning the game. They have long, 
loopy swings and out front because they think hitting is around their barrel goes over the top of balls and this is where the ground balls come from no kid on the planet goes straight downhill like that it's garbage they'd probably be better if they did right <laughs> so the 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 goal of getting a good launch position right is set by approach so if i have a good approach like now i'm thinking i got to take the good part of the bat for instance put it on the seven o'clock side of this bag Right, so I go here. It's now a me mechanical advantage, a biomechanical advantage to have the bat in my launch position set here because I'm going here, right? But if I'm going all the way over there, what good does it do? It's not going to do any good. So it's not a sequence problem. It is an approach problem. Okay, so make sure your player understands what it means to get inside of the ball. Right now is the time to do that, right? You start working on that, and I assure you, you're going to start seeing your player get into better and better positions. If they still think that hitting is out behind and around, right? You can work on launch position until the cows come home and it's not going to make a whole lot of difference. Please check out my program online, lsfhitting.com, fundamental perfection program, really geared for kids 8 to 12 years old. We're trying to get them a better feeling from the top of the swing through the ball and we're working from the ground up. All right.